Amen. <laughs> when uh, God is, Amen. God is uh, blessing us. Amen. Sometimes we tend to become relaxed and we let down our guards. We're not sometimes thinking in the mindset that, that we should be in. And so God wants to bless us this morning too. Uh, get this understanding, okay? And we're going to go over to Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. chapter Deuteronomy the 12th chapter Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, verse number 29. Let's start reading. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou su succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that ye have destroyed from before after they be destroyed after they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their god saying how did these nations serve their god even so will i do likewise okay now listen now god said after the sort scripture says when the lord god shall cut off the nations from before thee. God has blessed us to, to gain spiritual ground. Amen. God has blessed us to be able to 
conquer some territory. Amen. Naturally, as well as physically. Mm -hmm. And God says, when I cut off the nations from before you, when I cut off those that were seeking those blessings and possess those blessings, when I cut off those nations and I give you those blessings, don't act like them. Don't act like them. I've obtained this. And I've obtained that. And so forth and on. God says, don't inquire about their gods. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't inquire how they got to where they were and possessed the land. Don't do that. Right. Don't be snared by them. When God gives me a blessing and God said, I will give you the blessings of the heathens. Yeah. Not because you're a heathen. I'm taking them from the heathens and I'm giving them to you. Right. Don't act like the heathens. Yeah. Because guess what? The way I cut them off, I'm going to do you the same way. Yeah. If you act like they act, once you get this blessing, guess what? Just like I cut them off, I'm going to cut you off. The blessing is not to make me turn to the devil, it's to make me serve God. Amen. Amen. So many people do. Amen. God said, I give you these blessings. And I, I cut off those nations that you can go in and possess those lands. Don't act like them. Right. Don't in return turn around and serve their gods. Yeah. The children of Israel came out of Egypt. They said, uh, uh, these gods be the one that deliver us after they saw all the power of God. Mm -hmm. They saw the power working through Moses and said, these be the gods. The gods of gold. Let us take these before Pharaoh. Wow. Yeah. After all God did to deliver the children of Israel, they had the mindset to go back to Egypt. Mm. A place of torment. Yeah. Slavery. No hope. Slavery. Persecution. Death. Their mindset, once they got free, was to go back. Instead of going where God was telling them to go with the right heart and mindset, their mindset was to go back to Egypt. When I, correction, when the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, Look at what God is telling them. <coughs> well, why would God tell them? <coughs> For the same reason, he said, those that will be rich fall into many hurtful things. Because with this blessing, the devil is coming. All right. All right. I'm going to bless you to take this land but guess what? You got to fight now. Mm -hmm. it, it's a battle. I've given you wealth. You're married now. You got some beautiful children. Now a fight comes along. All right, yeah. You going to act like the heathen now? Mm. Or you going to lift up God? Mm -hmm. you know, we got this big house now. And you were once lowly and meek and humble. And now you, you know, you talk about God. You see me? You've obtained more than what you've ever had mm -hmm. through Christ. But now you're, you're acting like never chat me so now. Look at what I've done. What I did. Look at what I've done. Mm -hmm. Then take the counsel, amen, of Daniel. Then told him, King, cut off your sins. Humble yourself before God. Amen. The Bible says that when he was walking to the palace, he said, look at great Babylon. Look what I've done the same hour, same night. Correct? Same night. Same night. 
How does the king, who have done all these great things, end up crawling around with beasts in the wilderness for seven years My to learn a lesson? Amen? To learn a lesson. Amen? Uh -huh. They say all kinds of things like, you know, it's like, ain't nobody listening to you. And the devil say, ain't nobody listening to you. You ain't even got a real, a real tissue box. You got some toilet. Why <laughs> <laughs> right while I'm preaching? <laughs> I'm saying, that's the devil. I was tempted. I was tempted. <laughs> Take the dollar tree and get you So when God blesses us, when God cuts off those nations, when God cuts off those hindrances that would, would, would hinder us from getting our blessing, when God gives us those blessings, he says, how are you going to act now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you going to do now? Right. Yeah. Okay, I, I bless you with what you want. Mm -hmm. Is your spirit going to change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to turn now to the gods of the land? Or are you going to still serve? Yeah. Right. Am I going to have to cut you off the way I cut them off? Mm. <coughs> Amen. Lord, I want some great blessings. Well, you know what? You got some great tests and trials coming along That's with it. That's it. Amen. Amen. Lord, send more people. You got to give more of yourself. Amen. Amen. Lord, I want, I want 500 people. You know, you have to count all 500 of them. Amen. That's it. You know what I'm saying? 500 telephone calls. All that money. If you're struggling with 10, guess what? <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you got to be available to them. Amen. And it's going to be time that they'll say, yeah, you don't want to do what you can. Go on. Go take your wife and go out to dinner. God said, no. Mm -hmm. This is your dinner. Pick up that telephone. Mm -hmm. See what that saint needs. <laughs> <coughs> you Amen. want more children. It's a greater responsibility. Amen. See, see, whatever we ask God for, there's a battle that comes along with it. Amen. And we forget about Amen. that battle. Amen. 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying you got to recognize it. When you ask God for a blessing, what you think the devil is doing? You think he's just standing by saying, yes, no. Lord, just bless him. He said, yeah, Lord, as soon as you bless him with it, can, can I start? I? Can <laughs> soon, I? Like, like soon as you say, yes, can I start? He's right there to resist us in every aspect of life. And we have to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Listen to God. Amen. That's all we have to do. I, I teach all the time. We don't have to worry about what the devil do. All we got to do is obey what God says. Right. We read the uh, Sister Monica, uh, read the scripture. Uh, he said, I would never leave thee for safety this morning, right? Mm -hmm. There's no situation. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> There's no situation <coughs> where God would not help us. There's no situation where we are not already delivered. But we have to go through the process. Amen. 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 God said, I'm going to cut off all those other nations before you. And you can take that land. But you have to be willing to do what I'm telling you to do. Amen. Because it's a fight that comes with it. That's it. Amen. It's, it's been through its own trials. Amen. There's a fight that comes along with it. Amen. Amen. Get my tissue. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's a blessing. I, I'm a I'm a I wanted to ask that tissue Amen. box has been through its own trials and tribulations. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Amen. 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 
God in the box. <laughs> All right. Thank God for honoring the path. Amen. 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 All right. <coughs> <coughs> he said in verse 30, take heed to thyself. Paul warned Timothy. He said, take or uh, either Titus, take heed unto thyself and also unto the doctrine. Other times, when we get blessings, we don't see the devil. He's standing by and he wants to take those blessings. He doesn't want us to have them. Yeah. He does not want God to bless us with those blessings. And when God does, don't you know the devil? He say, it's, it's all our war. Yeah. It's right. all our war. And it's not the way we think. It's all our war since you you get to that certain plateau, you know, you get to that certain status, and, and he sends you thoughts. You the one. Yeah. There you go, there go the kid. There he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you walk into the house. Whew, look at me now. Huh? Look at me now. <laughs> How you like me now? Huh? Yeah. It's not the way we think. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thank God. You know, God, it, you know, I, I, I was thinking about it, you know, and, and you know, God it blessed us with the house. And I was really grateful because I knew that that was only God. I, I mean, I knew that that was only God. And he exceeded what I thought he was going to do. I mean, I knew he was going to bless you with something. But it was really beautiful. I mean, and I looked at it, you know, and, you know, and it, 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 the blessing was in my heart because that's what God did. Amen. It was in my heart because that's what God did. And when God told me to leave it, I could do the same thing. Amen. I could walk away from it. Amen. We were sitting in the house. I, you know, I got the, got the grass done, and I would just, it was beautiful. I just walk out at nighttime and look at the lights. And, you know, we got the lawn done and the trees and lights going into the, you know, yeah. and, and <laughs> the patio done. They got the patio done. You know, it, I mean, it's really nice. And I'm sitting out there and God said, sell it. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Sister Monica said, Pastor Warren, what you think about Houston? And God ain't talking to me about Houston. She said, well, I'm going to be praying about it. Amen. And I didn't know she was praying that God would send me to Houston with her. I told her, you pray about it. <laughs> I didn't know she was praying God would send me with her. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> God said, he said, Houston. I'm like, thank the Lord. And I knew Sister Lisa loved that house. She said, this is my dream house. I'm fine. <laughs> and Sister <laughs> Lisa, you know. God said, we're going to tell this house. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> and she said it. Well, and God say, sell it, we sell it, and we're going to go to Houston and do the will of God. Now, it wasn't my first experience. Thank the Lord. I didn't sell it the first one. Yeah. I no, she didn't sell it first. She looked at me like I was crazy. Like, you know, we just got here. You know, we ain't been here that long. And we done done all this yeah. fixing up. Meeting neighbors. Going to meetings. Going to meetings and all kind of different stuff. Golf course and jacuzzi and swimming pool. And, huh? And God say, sell it. Let it go. I got work for you to do. Amen. I possess what God tell me to possess. Amen. I do what God tell me to do. Amen. You see what I'm saying? When God cut off the nations and he blessed me with a blessing, I understand that that's God's blessing. Amen. It's Amen. not mine. That's it's it. mine because God gave it to me. But guess where that blessing came from? It Amen. came from God. That's it. And, Amen. and that's who I'm thanking for. It. Amen. And I praise him and I'm keeping God before me. And if he decides to take it, my soul is still saved. Amen. That's it. I'm still saved, sanctified, live for God. Well, thank the Lord. Well, where you want me to go, Lord? I'm going to show you. Hmm. I saw this house before anybody else saw it. I'm like, thank the Lord. 
Lord, if that's what you say. <clears throat> Amen. I came here and had pretty good, pretty good amount of money. And I was sitting at the table and I said, Lord, you know, it's about two or three months and ain't nobody got a job yet. <laughs> and I started talking to God. I said, Lord, this money I got. I said, Lord, I'm not going to have this money anymore. He said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm going to be broke. He said, you're going to be absolutely broke. <laughs> and I said, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I mean, I was literally out of about, it was about, it was about 20000 just to move. And I came, we had about, I was out of about $100,000 in about seven months. And heart still right with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because it was God's blessing. Amen. Yeah, this is plans we got here. Yeah. God blesses. Be able to buy the truck. And God told me, He said, if you'd have stayed in California, you still would have a business right now. <clears throat> but I wanted you to come here Amen. and I settled. Amen. Amen. Sell the truck. And God would say, how you going to get another truck? God. How did I get the first one? God. God. How did you get the other house? God. Everything else you've done, how did you, how did you do it, God? Amen. So why would I doubt him now? Amen. That's it. What? Why would I doubt him now? God cut those other nations off. I mean, we went, saw the house. We hadn't even got there. And the Holy Spirit told me, Elisa going to love this house. We got there, and we was pulling up to the gate. I said, Elisa, I said, listen, without even going inside, mm -hmm. I said, you're going to love this house. Do you want to make a bid for it? We made a bid for the house. And I didn't think we had went to the gate yet. We pulled up to the gate, and I told her, I said, find out how much they want for the house. And we went and saw three other men there. The first one we saw, she said, we don't have to go no further. I said, yeah, but since we're here, let's, let's look at the other two. Because we're already here. Let's look at it. Amen. God don't want to bless me and then I act like the other Amen. nations. Yeah. And I act like the other people. Go to serving the gods they serve. You know, people out here, you know, they serve the, the, the God of want and bless me. Mm. You know, in false religion, they teach you name it and claim it. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is believe. Well, what, if, what if God don't want to bless me with that? What, what then? Yeah. Pray for a Mercedes. But, but, but God bless me with a Volkswagen. Well, you only have Volkswagen faith. That's not true. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What if God don't want me to have a Mercedes? Why not pray the will of God be done? Amen. Amen. You know, I like Mercedes, but nothing wrong with it. But Lord, is that what you want to bless you with? No, it's nothing wrong with the car you got. I want you to keep that one. Thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with the van you got. Keep that one. Nothing wrong with the car you got. And then on the other hand, you say, I may want to bless you with another car, but it's not a Mercedes. I want to bless you with this right here. It may be a Mercedes. He said, I got one for you. Amen. But what is God saying? What, what is the will of God in this situation? That's it. Amen. See, if I'm not careful, I'm a saint. But I'm letting the devil use me to pray for what I want. I want. I want. I want. I want. I want. You don't want to suffer? Uh-uh-uh. <laughs> uh no, I didn't, I'm not that. And my prayer is always, I want, I want, I want. Lord, give me, give me. Come on. And, and it's not spiritual blessings. I'm not praying for more faith. I'm not praying, Lord, for you to take me through. I'm praying for items. Materialistic things. Amen. I'm praying for items. I'm praying for materialistic things. Mm -hmm. God said, how about your spirit? Seek ye first. Amen. That's it. That's it. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you, right? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Listen. <coughs> and when the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, 
whether thou goest to possess them and to and thou succeedest them. Right. Not only do I have their possessions, but I'm, su I'm, I'm succeeding what they have. What's my mindset going to be like now? What's my heart like now? Have I declined in my spirituality because I have a nice big house? I'm always thinking about fixing. God said, how about giving the church an offering? No. I'm going to tile, tile the deck. There's nothing wrong with the deck. I'm going to refurnish the backyard. You bought this house with a very nice backyard. There's nothing wrong with it. How about giving the church an offering? God will try it. Lord, I don't have, have no change, but give me the 50. <laughs> I want to go run to the store. Can you give me some gum so I can break this? So I can give God $5? <laughs> no, nothing wrong with giving $5 if that's what God's saying. That's all you got. But sometimes God will try to give me the big building. You keep the little. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes. Amen. We get our tax return and God say, well, Lord, I already paid taxes on this. And I already gave offering, which is true. Because that's, that, that's money you've, you've already earned. But God said, give me offering. I got things to do with this money. I already got it planned out. I pay my tithes and my offers, and I'm faithful, Lord. And you want some more? God may not be saying give something to the church. He may be telling you to take it and help someone else. Amen. Whatever the case may be. He may not be telling you to spend it all. He said, why don't you... Why don't you save that money? You have enough. Why don't you save it? Put it to the side. A rainy day is coming. Mm -hmm. Damn, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Rainy day is coming. Save that money. Put that money to the side. You don't always have to go somewhere. Stay home this weekend. You don't always have to be doing something relaxing. Sit down and talk to your husband or wife. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You ask it a lot. <laughs> Amen. God don't put he put the finger right where it needs to go. Amen. <coughs> don't seek and inquire the gods of the people. Holiness got you here, stay with it. Amen. 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 Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they've been destroyed before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. God was telling Moses to warn the people for a reason. He wasn't just saying it for nothing. He was telling them for a reason. When I bring you into this land and when I bless you with all the things that I want to bless you with, the devil is going to try. Amen. And I'm not going to stop. Amen. What I want you to do is stand and do what I'm telling you to do. Amen. That's what I want you to do. Amen. Me and Sister Monica was talking. I said, you know, and it wasn't about, you know, like anything bad or anything like that. Excuse me. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, it's not about anything bad or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, we pray for great and mighty things. And, and we don't see that with those great and mighty things are coming great and mighty spirits. Yeah, man. You know, we pray uh, for, excuse me, we pray for God to do great things, but we don't want the great battles that come with them. Yeah. Well, the responsibility that comes with the blessing. <laughs> excuse me. 
Amen. You know, we want a million dollars, but we want a ten dollar bag. Right. Hmm. Lord, bless me with a million dollars. Do you know the spirit that's going to come with that? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He give you, he give you a test. He give you seventeen hundred dollars. He said, "Can you get this up?" No. That's, <laughs> it. that's it. Thousand dollars. Don't forget that too. He want me to give you a million. You can't even have a thousand. <laughs> that's it. You can't how to handle ten percent of your tax return. <laughs> and I ain't with seventy dollars. <laughs> God told me, he said, I want you to give the church $12,500. And I wrote a check. And I said, but Brother Robert, you? I said, yeah, that's what the Lord told me. I want you to give me this. So the Lord said, give $12,500. There it is. I didn't give it to anybody else. I gave it to her. I said, more well, money? God said, give me $500. No questions asked. Mm -hmm. I ain't starved one day. Amen. It may not have been everything I wanted, but I ain't starved. Mm -hmm. I've never starved a day. And I tell you, the road's been easy. It hasn't. Amen. But he never failed me. Amen. Amen. Do I regret it? No. God told me to do it. That's why I did. And from my own testimony, I'm telling you, I've had $55 in my pocket. And even before I pulled it out, God said, you keep the five. <laughs> I want you to get a 50. No. Amen. Money and possessions are a big thing to people, even saints. And we don't want to admit it, but it's true. Because like the world, we oftentimes think what we possess makes us who we are. And it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's why I can worship God in the kitchen. Because that doesn't make me who I am. God does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people can't do what we're doing. They have to go to a big site because... That makes them feel like important. It makes them feel like they're special. The Holy Spirit makes me feel important. Amen. Serving God makes me feel, I don't care where I'm at. So it doesn't matter. I have preached in the kitchen and I will continue to preach in the living room, in the kitchen, and wherever else God tells me to because that's the most important thing. Nothing wrong with having a big building. And someday, I pray that when we're ready, God bless us with a big building. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand the message. What I'm talking about is what's in my heart. Amen. When God does do that, what's going to happen? Amen. When he sends those spirits, and he will send them, how am I going to react? Yeah. Right. What am I going to do? Am I going to act like the people? Or am I going to keep on serving God like he's telling me to? Amen. So we have to understand something. With status comes a fight. Mm -hmm. It comes a fight. And you have to be ready for it. Boy, when you know when I get to this status right here, well, how are you doing now? Yeah. That's how you're gonna do then. Yeah, that's right. That's the way it goes. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. So always Amen. pray in the will of God. Lord, what's your will? Why? Because that's what I have grace for. The will of God. Not what I want. That's why a lot of times God don't answer our prayer. Because he already knows. You don't have the grace for that. Mm -mm. 
if I bless you with what you what you wanted right now, you would not be saved. That's right. Man. And a whole lot of saints don't believe that, but it's true. Because I tell you what, if the Lord show blessed with you, look at your attitude now. Imagine if you did that. Mm. Yeah, can't nobody tell you nothing now. <laughs> and I bless you like that? Oh. Yeah, little buzz like your infinity, you just gone. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. Hey, Amen. God is having Moses warn the people for a reason. In verse 31, thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. Who am I doing it to? God. God. Thou shalt not do this. Hey, Amen. Keep reading. For every abomination <coughs> to the Lord which he had, hated, have they done unto their God. That's what they've done. Everything God hates is how they serve their gods. I don't want you like that. Yeah. I don't want you serving me like that. Keep reading. Uh, for even <clears throat> their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire for their God. To their God. To their God. Listen now. Listen at what they're doing. And God clearly telling them, I don't want you doing that. Because you're going into a place where that happens. I don't want you doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want you sacrificing your children. I don't want you burning them on the altar. I don't want you doing that. Yeah. That's the way the devil people serve him. We have a difference. We make a difference between the things that are clean and unclean, said the Lord. Yeah. Why do you deal with your children like that? Because I serve God. That's why. Amen. Yeah. And I'm not letting the devil have them. I'm not letting the devil have my children. I'm not letting the devil have this congregation. If I listen to him, he'll take it. Yeah. Don't say this. Don't say that. Don't say the other. Don't do it. Why? Because when I do that, he just came in. <clears throat> Amen. Thou shalt not do these things. Verse 32. What, what, okay. what thing soever I command of you. Listen, whatsoever thing I command you. Observe to do it. Listen. So what do we do? What God is commanding us to Amen. do. Amen. That's what we do. See, I told you last week and for several weeks, God does not leave what to do up to us. He tells us yeah. exactly what to do. Amen. He doesn't leave it up to us. Why? Because our steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. The way a man is not in himself. If God leave it to us, we'd be doing the same thing with the children did at the, uh, the, the towers of Babel. We'd be building our own way to heaven. Yeah. It's not left up to us. Amen. It's left up to God. Yeah. And he tells us exactly what to do. Amen. God told Noah. The Bible says, the, 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 the thoughts of man was evil continually. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah built me an ark. Amen. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Get the golfer wood. Amen. Noah built that ark exactly like God told him to. Mm -hmm. God commanded Noah to build an ark and told him, this is how you build it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. God said, children are in heritage of the Lord. Then he went on up to say, train up a child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. For when they're old and not depart, amen, if you beat them, they shall not die. That's it. That's right. He didn't say abuse them. That's right. Get a brick and hit them in the head. Throw some, a shoe halfway across the room. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, chest mm -hmm. Train them up. Tell them what's right and wrong. Moses said, amen. Over there in the 6th and the 7th chapter of Deuteronomy, he said, whatever you're doing, tell them about God. Mm -hmm. When you rise up in the morning, teach them about God. When you lay it down, teach them about God. Mm -hmm. When you're in the field, tell them about God. Amen. Okay, listen. Well, I, listen, you always telling your children about God. Well, if you don't, then who else talking? The devil. The devil. The devil. So, the they're going to hear what I'm telling them about God, and they're going to hear what the devil's saying. Now, which one do you want? Amen. My objective is I want to keep God on their mind. Mm -hmm. Well, what about when you're at Disneyland? Keep God in front of them. Amen. You go to Disneyland, and have, I, I plan on going as soon as I get a chance. 
<laughs> hey, I'm serious. I'm going to Magic Mountain as soon as I get a chance. But I'm taking God with me. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't going to go to Disneyland and lose my mind. Wee! You need to need <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Saints, let's keep God first. Let's pray before we go in the mall. Lord, we take the Spirit of God in there with you. Nothing wrong with shopping, Amen. spending some money. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to keep God first. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to go in there like I ain't got no sense. Amen. I'm not going to do that. I'm in the grocery store. I'm keeping God first. He's going there shopping, just buying up everything. Come on. Okay, Lord, what, what do we need? What, what can I get? Then your rent money, light money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep it God first. Nothing wrong with buying a new car, but you, you, you know, keep God first. You, you know, you, you know, they, they, you say, well, you know, we've authorized you for seventy thousand dollars, and you spend all seventy. God say, did you need to do that? <laughs> Did you need to spend all seven? Well, I, I know car, but did you, did you have to get a note that's fifteen hundred dollars a month? Mm. You know, you could have did, you could have used some wisdom, and you could have did better than that. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keep it God first. Amen. Nothing wrong with it. We can, as saints, we can enjoy some of the things in this world. We just have to keep God first. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some things we ain't going to enjoy because that's not God fun. Right. That's the devil. It ain't God fun. We're not doing that. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm not going into the haunted house. I'm going to get on the roller coaster. Amen. I'm not going over to the tarot cards. You don't need to. I already know my future. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell somebody else theirs. I know where I'm going. Stay right on the path. I'm telling you where I'm going. Amen. Amen. They got all kind of stuff out here. Tell you about yourself. One preacher said, if you don't know who, who you are, somebody will tell you who you are and mess you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to know who you are. I know who I am in Christ. I don't have to worry about nobody telling me nothing. Amen. If you don't believe it's real, read your Bible. We have to not go on. Read your Bible over there in Acts. They told, they said, they said, Paul, they said, uh, 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 these are the men that, uh, that served God. He turned around and rebuked that spirit. And they came after Paul. Say he, he taking away our, our money. Amen. Some of the people, they heard the, the truth and they took all their witchcraft and books and everything and start burning them. Amen. And they had a problem with that. Wait a minute. We can't make no more money. Mm -hmm. We got to bring a charge against these people. Because they're taking away our money. Mm -hmm. Amen. We tell people about God, we're taking away their finances. Mm -hmm. You don't need a psychologist. You need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hold on, sir. <laughs> she do need a psychologist. <laughs> That's $500 a, a, a session. <laughs> I can give you one for free. You need to get saved. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. My, my cousin was in the hospital and she said, they're trying to give her all kind of medicine. She told him, she said, I, I, I don't need all of that. I don't need, she said, Jesus is a healer. They told her, you got to stop that. Mm -hmm. You got people in here believing they don't have to take medicine, they can trust God. They physically told her that. Mm -hmm. Don't you know we're a hospital, we're in the business of making money? And you telling people to trust God, you can't do that. Mm. You got to stop that now. Here's this 700 bottle of, 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 um, of, 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 no, no, of aspirin. Even if you want to take some, you go to Walgreens and get the same bottle for $10, you made 700 for it. <laughs> you ever read the list of stuff they be charging you for? $60 for a band-aid. <laughs> 
I got I went to the emergency room for four hours. It was eleven thousand five hundred dollars for four hours. And if I listen to the devil, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't go back to school. Get some type of certificate. <laughs> If I listen to the devil. Right. Yeah. $11,000. Four hours. They took some x-rays, asked me about myself, did a casket. I got the bill, $11,500. You did provide that service. You did not provide eleven thousand and five hundred dollars worth of service, but that's the world's way. Mm -hmm. I know some people might think I'm ridiculous, but when they go in these places, you go in these car places. Would you like some coffee? Yes, I want <laughs> coffee, cream, tuna, crackers, <laughs> chips, soda, water. I bring me a little lunch break. I'm taking it. They kill you. They kill you. Yeah. How you doing? Ask me that when I leave. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Offer you stuff. Compliments. I already paid for it. Ain't no compliment. I paid for it already. Amen. <coughs> Free lunches. I'm taking all of Come back tomorrow. I'm coming. Churches out here robbing people. Every Sunday they got you paying into something. <clears throat> Amen. Passing wife anniversary. Passing wife birthday. Appreciation day. Appreciation day. <clears throat> Kids back to school fine. There's all kind of stuff. Huh? Car wash. Debbie Tom Ball. Huh? Church uh, uh, buffet free day. All kind of stuff. You just dumping money into it. What you get for your soul? Not still commit sin. Mm -hmm. When you die, you lost. Amen. Wow. <clears throat> I see. When you die, you lost. That's all you got. And the preacher, he just laughed and going to the bank. Pockets just full. <laughs> Pockets just full. You get nothing for your soul. That's the world's way. We don't rip people off. That's an experience. That's the world's Amen. We don't be dishonest with saints. We don't do that. Amen. We're not in it for the money. Do we need money just like everybody else? Sure we do. But we're not in the business of ripping people off, being dishonest. We don't do that. This is about your soul. Amen. Amen. Your tithes in your office, that's all God required. That's all I require. Is what the Bible says, your tithes in your office. Amen. That's it. Whatever, whatever God bless you to offer, and 10% of what you make every month or every week or whatever it is. <clears throat> and that's how we support the church. Amen. God bless us to grow in a, such a way that I could quit my job, I will. Because I'm going to have to. I talked about, we was laughing about all them phone calls. Well, I got I to make them sometime during the day. You want to switch from select to church? Huh? You want to switch from select to church? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I mean, if, if I need to, I will. But I also work because I need to. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. Amen. God don't want us acting like the other nations when he bless us with what he want to bless us with. Because when he does... And if you paid attention to your own blessing, when God bless you with something, you pay attention to the battle that you have that come with it. You got to fight. <coughs> Amen. Verse 33. <coughs> 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 
What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. So thou, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Okay. Or diminish from it. Okay. All right. Now, let's turn our Bibles over to <coughs> Titus, the first chapter. Then we're going to go to Second Timothy. Titus, the first chapter. <clears throat> Titus, the first chapter. Then we're going to go over to 1 Timothy. And we're almost done. Now we're not going to be too much longer. Yeah. Titus, the first chapter. <clears throat> Titus, the first chapter, we're going to read verse number uh, verse number six uh, down to verse number nine. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot All right. or unruly. So listen now. So when you hold position... Or when God blesses you to hold a position, there's a standard that comes along with it. <clears throat> there's a standard that comes along with it. And that standard that I produce in my life confirms that I have the grace and authority to be in a position that I am because you see what I can do. Yeah. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> you see, people oftentimes naturally, as well as spiritually, they're in positions and their life doesn't line up with the position that they hold. Yeah. <clears throat> because they're not authorized to be in that position. Okay. When you're in position, you hold a responsibility that no one else holds. That responsibility is it is my job to make sure that it is right. Yeah. Amen. Naturally or physically. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, we laugh about it, but I tell the saints, you know, we talk about things going on at the job, and I said, you, I don't care. That's not my job. That's not my authority. I, I'm not the supervisor. Now, when they make me supervisor, then I'll start caring. That's my job now. Amen. It's my job to make sure things are going like they're supposed to. My job now is to go to work and do what they ask me to do. That's what I do. You ask me to answer phones, I answer phones. Do referrals and do all this stuff. Well, what do you think about this? I'm not concerned about that. You know what I'm concerned about, don't you? <laughs> every two weeks and food. <laughs> I'm concerned about every other Friday yeah. and when they bring food in. <laughs> it's not my job to figure out how to fix the problems on the job. That's not my job. Why would I consume why would I consume myself with trying to fix problems that exist that they already know exist and they don't want to do nothing about it? Why would I do that? It's not my job. My job is to go to work, do my job, and come home. That's what I do. Amen. And I'm totally fine with that. Now, when they say, Robert, would you like to be a supervisor or so-and-so, then I'll consider the cost. Because there is a cost that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. I can't do that anymore. I can't say, well, I'm going home. It doesn't work that way. You're a supervisor now. If you wanted to go home, you should have took this job. You should have just stayed a regular employee. You can go home, clock out, and go home. That's y'all problem. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> I understand that when I took the job, the pressure that comes along with it. When people have problems, guess who they call? The supervisor. The supervisor. Hey, Mr. So-and-so, Ms. So-and-so, this was going on here, then they got to fix it. That's what they paid for. 
As a regular employee, I don't get paid for that. And I don't care. I know it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. It sounds harsh, but it's the truth. It's not my problem. Amen. What is my problem, that's what I take seriously. Yeah. That's what I'm dedicating myself to. When they say, how come the phone's not being answered now, I got an answer for that, because that's what they paid me to do. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? They don't pay me to fix problems. Can you fix this? Can you call the supervisor? You can't fix this? You can't call the supervisor? Because <laughs> if I'm fixing their problems, what are they doing? Hey, Miss So and So, this is happening right here. Where are you going? I'm late. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. It's not my problem. When I get into that position, I can't do that. It's different. I'm held to a different standard now, and it's different. I can't say I don't care. Yeah. I can't say that. I'm wrong now. I can't just go home now. I'm wrong now. I got to take care of it. I got to fix it. Whatever the problem is, it's my job now. I have to fix it now. It's my responsibility to do that. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's my job. That's what they pay me for. I'm not justified, naturally or spiritually. To walk away from a situation that I have the control over and I don't do nothing. I can't do that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you want to be in position. You have to understand. You know, it's, it's an animated story, but uh, in the bug's life, you know, he told the queen, he said, everything. First rule of leadership. Every thought is your thought. Rosary leadership. And they come into a place where they want to know is where's all the workers at? Nope. Nope. Where's the boss? Where the boss? Who's in charge? You know what anybody point to? Him. <laughs> Him or her. <coughs> and then they start to scatter. Because <laughs> they already know what's coming. But you understand that. When you take the position, everything is your fault. And you can't push it on nobody else. You got to come up with the answer. And how we fix this? How we do this? <clears throat> so it goes. That's not fair. It's life. It's the way it happens. You got to deal with it. You got to understand. When you take a position, what are you getting yourself into? Mm -hmm. You need to understand, what am I getting myself into? But what am I saying yes to? Careful what you ask for. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful. Because guess what? The, the pressure is on now. It's your problem. Whatever the problems are, they're your problem. Amen? If you're a supervisor, you know, you're not like a regular employee. You can't put your phone on mute. You're the supervisor. We need you to answer the phone whenever we call you. You know, they offer me a job. Why? They want me to be a supervisor. Why? How did the other ones do? You know, you can find a lot of a lot about places if you just ask some simple questions. Who was the supervisor before? Where did they go? They got fired. What about the one before? They got fired. I don't want that job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup. It's nothing more than a setup. They looking for a fall guy. Don't want to be bothered with that. Ask some people, you know, how hey, you like being a supervisor? And tell me the truth. It'll be a short conversation. Because they'll tell you the truth, I don't like it. You pretty much got your answer. And then the one after that is going to be a real long why. And then they'll go down a whole list of reasons why. It's not usually just one thing. It's a whole list of things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I found out the hard way. Some things, some things I already knew, but then I, I found out some inner workings. You know, I had the thought, you know, this is where I want to go, and then I found out how I really went inside. I was like, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. I asked one of my bosses one time, uh, 
I work for the government. I just simply asked him, I said, listen, if you had to do it all over again, would you? He said, no. I said, why? He said, it wasn't worth it. I gave them everything they asked me to do, and when it came time for them to give me what I wanted, they gave it to somebody else. It was a slap in the face. Not once, but several times. Wouldn't do it again. That's it. And looked at others, had conversations with them, looked at the look they had on their face, because you know, a whole lot of times it'll tell the story. I don't want to be bothered with that. God doesn't operate like that. Yeah. He doesn't put you in a trick bag. He doesn't do that. He doesn't mistreat you. He don't throw you to the wolves. He doesn't do that. He'll tell you, I'm calling you to this. Yeah. And just like he je told Jeremiah, I'm sending you to a rebellious house. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you to some people that they know my voice, but they won't do it. But I'm going to be with you. He'll tell you exactly what's going on. As one person, uh, uh, same day, I started. And we was talking, he said, uh, he said, I'm just uh, shooting from here. He said, we just babysitting on him. He waste no time. We babysit. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Keep reading. Verse 7. <coughs> For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy liqueur. Okay, listen now. For a bishop must be blameless. No charge. Blameless. No charge. Can't be so in the angry. Can't be quick. You can't have a quick temper. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you hear me? <laughs> you come in to get counseling. I look like you better not say nothing to me. You got, got to be blameless. You got to have the right spirit. See, Paul is telling us. If, if you want to be in this position, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. But let me tell you, you got to be blameless. Mm -hmm. People got to always be able to say, you got the right attitude. You got the right spirit. God, is, it may not always agree. And that's okay. We're not going to always agree on everything. You're not gonna always, and I know you don't always agree with everything I tell you. But I got to have God. I can't act like everybody else. Well, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you either. Wait a minute. Bye-bye. <laughs> you bye, bye. You got to come back. What you say? <laughs> Can't be like that. <clears throat> Sit down. Got to give you the right counsel all the time. Can't be acting in my feelings. Giving counsel out of uh, being upset. Can't do that. Gotta have the right attitude. Gotta be motivated by God all the time. Amen. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self will, not soon angry. Not give it to one. No striker. Can't be hitting people spiritually. I'm taking a word and instead of counseling and helping you, I'm hitting you. Striking you. Slicing you with the word. Can't do that. Amen. There's, there's rules that apply to you that don't apply to everybody else in an elevated position. You ever heard him say, you know, when you're a supervisor, you're held to a higher standard? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're held to a higher standard. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> no striker. Not given to filthy liqueur. Keep reading. But a lover of hospitality. But a lover of hospitality. 
A lover of good men. A lover of good men. Sober. Sober. Just. Just. Holy. Holy. Temperate. Temperate. Look at all these things. These are all a part of the position. Give it to house fatality. I'm tired of them coming over here. Give it to house fatality. When you leave it, give it to house fatality. Always give it. Always willing to give. Huh? Give it to house fatality. Amen. Going above and beyond to help souls. You got to be a lover of good men. You can't love people when all you're doing is looking at what you see. You can't love them like that. You got to love them like God say. Loving people no matter what. Because that's what God does. Now, I'm not talking about going along with people sin. We're not talking about that. We're talking about loving. When we was in a world without Christ, he died for us. Mm-hmm. He loved us even when we were sinners. In my position, I have to have a testimony with sinners that I'm not a striker. Yeah. I got to have a, a testimony with sinners that he's a good man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. My testimony and my witness has to be consistent. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Amen. Keep reading. Hold fast the faithful word <coughs> as he has been taught. Keep reading. That he may be able to by sound doctrine, doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Both to exhort, amen. Both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. I got to be able to take the gospel, the word of God, and convince you and gain you. Through the power of Christ working in you. Amen. Not for evil, for good. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Second, uh, first Timothy. I'm sorry, not first. Yeah, first Timothy, that's right. First Timothy. Whoa. First Timothy, the sixth chapter. First Timothy six. First Timothy chapter six. First one. Uh, no, I'm sorry. First Timothy six, uh, verse number ten. First Timothy <coughs> six and ten. For the love of many sufferings, and the root of all evil. For the love of money, the love of it is what the root of all evil. It's the root of all evil. The evilness begins with my love and desire for money. What's wrong with it? Nothing. What's wrong with me loving it? Over God, something's wrong with it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> for the love of money is the root of all evil. Keep reading. Which while some con- <clears throat> covet after. L- listen at who he's talking about. While some have done what? Coveted after. Coveted after. They have erred from the faith. They've erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through, through with many sorrows. They've done it. They've erred from the faith. they pierced themselves. Amen. Nothing wrong with money. Nothing wrong with finances. Want, not, nothing wrong with wanting to have nice things. But when I'm coveted in that. Something happens. Yeah. Another <laughs> spirit now works in me. Amen. Let's go over to Second Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, and we're going to end with that. Second Corinthians thirteen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Second Timothy. <coughs> oh, I'm right, sorry. 2 Corinthians 13 chapter. So I read that verse number 1, then we're going to skip down to verse number 5 and then stop. This is the third time I am coming to you. Okay, listen now. This is the third time I'm coming to you. 
This is that what the Apostle Paul said. This is the third time I'm coming to you. Keep reading. Okay. 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. Keep reading. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I've given you more and more and more and more witnesses about the way that you're going. You're going to accept it or reject it. Verse number 5. Verse 5. It says, examine yourselves. Wait a minute. Listen at what Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He said, examine what? Yourself. Yourself. Whether you be in the faith. I have to examine myself. You have to examine yourself. Whether if you're in the faith or not. Whether if you're doing what God is telling you to do. Whether if you're walking in the path of holiness and truth. You got to examine yourself. That means it's a process. You need to get in the mirror and say, Lord, what is? what do you see? Yeah. My prayer is, Lord, help me to see myself the way you see me. Amen. Help me to see the way you see me, Lord. And if I need to make a correction, then I can make that correction. Amen. See, we have a, a way of looking at ourself is not gospel. Yeah. You know, because we can say, I'm okay, I'm this, I'm all that, I'm that. But what is God saying? Yeah. Right. See, we can say what we want to say about ourselves, but what is the Holy Ghost saying? Examine yourself. You ever had an examination? Yeah. It's not a quick process, is it? No. Yeah. Blood pressure, eyes, know it. You're getting an examination. Why do you get song? I'm getting an examination. Examine yourself. If I examine myself, I won't need nobody else to do it. If I judge myself, I won't need nobody else to do it. I won't have to be judged by others. Because when I judge myself and examine myself and do what God said, I'm going to make the correction. I'm going to do exactly what God is telling me to do. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith or not. Keep reading. It says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. <coughs> Prove your own selves. Prove what? Prove your own selves. Prove your own selves. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with what? Fear, Fear and trembling. Work it out. Lord, this, no, no, no. Work it out. Work out your own salvation. Work it out. What God is showing you, work it out. Amen. Work it out. Just dive right into you with the gospel. Amen. Keep reading. Um, keep ye not your own self. Okay, know ye not? Oh, I'm sorry. Know ye not. Oh, wow. Well, sorry. Know ye not your own selves, <coughs> how that Jesus Christ <coughs> is in you, except ye be reprobates. All right. Paul said in the scripture, I preach the gospel, yet I be a castaway. Amen. Amen. God said, I'm going to bless you with the land. But don't serve their gods. Amen. I'm going to bless you with the land, but examine yourself. Don't mm -hmm. serve their gods. Don't serve their gods. Right. Because there's going to be a temptation that when you get to where I'm sending you, there's going to be a temptation to change things. Mm -hmm. To do things differently. Yeah. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to keep serving me in the beauty, amen, of holiness. Amen. We thank God for being saved. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God for a blessed message. Thank God for us holding to the faithful word which we have been taught. You know, that's my prayer. Um, you know, the Lord, every time he gives me an opportunity to share, I, 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 I try to stay with what I've been taught, to try to stay with what God has directed me and guided me. You know, every pastor that you are put under is because that pastor has the testimony and experience to guide and direct you, you know, and they have, you know, each pastor in each congregation is given their own flock, their own, you know, people that you are called to, but you're called to that ministry as well because of your own testimony. 
And, and, and that's one thing that the Lord has really helped me is that where you are is where you need to be. You know, the experiences you're getting with this ministry is the experience you need for your testimony. You know, um, if anybody has a mind to be saved, if anybody has a heart to turn their life over to Jesus Christ, you can pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for being with us, Lord God. I thank you for leading, guiding, and directing us. If anybody has a mind to turn their life over to Jesus Christ, Lord God, if anybody has a heart to turn their turn their soul over to you, Lord God, help them pray this prayer today, Lord God. If they believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, if they believe that he rose again after three days and gave them power to live a sin-free life, if they repent for their sins in their hearts, Lord God, and turn from the, the evil, the, the, the bad things that they're doing, Lord God, then they can be saved. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Now, if you repented for your sins in your heart and you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, then you're saved. Um, you can stay after service and talk to Pastor Robert, or you can contact Pastor, Pastor Robert Juvenary, 562- 261-7055. Again, that's 562-261-7055. Uh, special prayer for co-workers, um, Chris, Vicki, Tracy, and, and Tracy's mother um, as they are being pressed uh, in their body in different situations within their families. Uh, continue to pray mercy uh, for those. Um, and then I have a uh, special prayer request also just that the Lord continue to keep me um, within uh, his will and his way as he continues to elevate this ministry, as he continues to move us in the direction we need to go, that the Lord just continues to keep us. Um, amen. We are going to do our closing prayer. Um, Sister Shannon, do you mind praying? Amen. <coughs> amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that went forth. Lord, we thank you for giving us the understanding and the things that we needed in this message, Lord. Yes, Lord. Allow us to take heed to it and apply it to our lives, Lord. Help us to stay where we are or we're supposed to be, to not turn to the right and to the left, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to hear the prayer request that went forth, Lord. You know the situation, Lord Jesus. We ask you to do your will in those things. We ask you to bless the congregation, to bless us as we go yes, forward in our Lord. week, to keep you with us, to let others see your light in us, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude our service. Have a wonderful and a blessed.